program. And as Matt said, with the, the IRA just pat recently passed in Washington by Congress, we're going to see a lot of initiatives in the area of renewable energy. So I think we should all be hopeful and, uh, you know, continue to, oh, and, and continue to work together on this. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Quick, quickly. I, quickly. I'm also very happy that you are now all very interested. I am very happy that you're all now very interested in staying highly educated on this complex manner, which is to the benefit of the town and to the benefit of all of us. And I will be, we will be as flexible and we, I am so happy that now you are saying you will be flexible and interested and sincere about this task that is before us. Because previously we felt that you were not as interested in getting your knowledge up to date. And now you are, and I'm so glad. And then we will all hopefully be able to work together and solve this because we know it's a problem in this world. Thank you. So yeah, and, and I think I think the you know the and I agree with Lisa. The the larger problem is that we are all saying that the climate situation is getting worse and worse. The fires, the floods, here even here in Teaneck, and I see that's on the agenda, Bell Avenue. So we we've got to we've got to work together. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. All right. On to new business. I think that's it. Yes. Matt, thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks for coming, Mr. Smith. Mr. Mayor. Yes, go ahead. Under new business, I'd like to nominate Jose Zainan um, as chair of the Stigma Free Advisory Board second. for our next meeting. Okay. It's been moved and second in nomination for Jose Zainan. Uh, he will be um, on the agenda for September 20th for appointment. Okay. Communications, any other communications from anybody? No. Committee reports. Sure. Yep. Mr. Mayor, sorry, Mr. Chair, wrong board. Sorry. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry. There was one before. Historic marker is not mine. I'm sorry. sorry. Historic mark. Uh, one of the members from the uh, Historic Preservation Commission, unfortunately, had an emergency. So could we postpone that to the next meeting? Sure. Okay. Um, uh, on, from ahead. the Parking Committee, two items. Let me pull up my first report. Uh, first, um, as it relates to our, and I want to thank um, the Deputy Manager, uh, Mr. Rowe, for working with me on this. Uh, just a quick little update for almost a month of August. This is from 8-1 to 8-29. The town revenue has been approximately $949 via Park Mobile. 65 decals were sold for the amount of $3,250. And 261 summonses at $54 fines were issued as well. Just keep in mind, this we only get 50% of those fines. The rest goes to other agencies. That said, of course, we're not interested in any fines. We want compliance but we are, um, we're moving forward with this. We also had a meeting, this the parking committee had a meeting this past month with a parking uh, consultant who also does a significant, probably one of the most uh, largest in the country, seemingly, and has also uh, pointed us in the direction of New Rochelle, which does a lot of parking related work. So we're in talks with uh, the manager and I are in talks with them as well as we further take our parking game into this century. Um, also just wanted to report Ayers Court the Ayers Court Parking, I'm looking for nodding heads if, if interested. The first Ayers Court spots east of Queen Anne Road does not adjoin any apartment buildings. It's primarily, and the police have confirmed this, it's primarily office workers and maybe retail workers. Um, it's not near the apartments, which is further down on Ayers Court. And the merchants have requested to benefit the shoppers that we add timing to those lots to further meet, match the other timing in that area, because apparently it's been being taken advantage of by workers. And if there is some nodding heads, it'll match the other uh, court, uh, the plaza, Ayers is the plaza, it'll match what we have on the other side, west of Queen Anne Road to, um, to link to be the exact same timing if we have interested uh, for nodding heads for that timed. Any objection? Any objection? 
Seeing okay. So we would work with that in ordinance over the next few months. That'd be great. Um, next, from my street naming. Um, it's We've been requested, asked, and I am um, honored to request council permission to put on the September 20th meeting to rename either a portion of West Englewood Avenue uh, between uh, in front of Congregation Rena Israel, which is at 389 West Englewood Avenue, or a portion of Amsterdam Avenue in front of God Torah Academy, which is 1600 Queen Anne Road, in honor of the retiring Rabbi Yosef Adler. Rabbi Adler was the principal of Torah Academy for 25 years and educated thousands of uh, students, uh, um, including myself, or at least tried to. Um, additionally, Rabbi Adler was the president for over 30 years, the rabbi for the rabbinical leader for over 30 years at Congregation Rena. Arena Israel and uh, thousands upon thousands of residents. Uh, he has been their spiritual leader. And as such, I'm looking for uh, nodding heads to put that on our next September 20th agenda. I'm in favor, Mr. Mayor. Mm -hmm. This I'm is in, in front of Rena you're looking to do. I re I, I've been trying to get the exact answer from them. Is it preferred to be Rena or uh, Torah Academy? I, I prefer Rena. I think so. Also, I prefer Rena. So. Of and I think that's also. I, I would say I think okay. it serves a larger section of the community. And I would work and with you in getting the information. Any objection? the individual. Hearing none? Okay. Go for it. Yeah, he's leaving. He's retiring. He's leaving this country. So we're trying to get it done in October. Okay. Um, and lastly, just to mention to everyone here, just something to think about this. There's been some conversation as COVID has gone be uh, moved on, hopefully, um, of naming part of the hospital uh, in the row nearby the hospital in honor of, of Mike Marin or Marin Way or something. So just please keep that in your minds for the next few months, whether it be a Chadwick or Grange well, or Chadwick whatnot. Chadwick is what we're closing or vacating for the hospital. True, so, the, but if we're closing would, it, is that is that a, no, hey, here's a closed it. street. Do you want to name it after yourself? <laughs> no, or? I mean, I would. Be, it's really technically going to be like the hospital's cul-de-sac, for the lack of better words. I would be that, in favor of, of that, Mr. Mayor. Okay, I think it's something we can think about. To keep in mind, that part of Chadwick is closed as residential. The other Chadwick is being vacated. Right. I, oh, I well, think we, we can, can look at it. Yeah, we can look. We at can it. look at it. I just want to buy here. So let's keep on. Okay. Let's think about it. Maybe people, people drive by and see that or Grange or something like okay. that. Okay. Um, okay. Because there's just been a lot of conversation about that. Um, oh, I think it does are my okay. reports. All right. Mr. Mayor. Yes. Um, with regard to uh, the advisory board for community relations, uh, once again, all council members receiving copy of the report. Um, and Mr. Mayor, I know that you have made note that we will ha have an annual report and presentation by the advisory board for our next meeting on September 20th. Correct. Um, and just wanted to make sure that that was known uh, where the uh, advisory board would be able to address the issues and concerns that they have noted okay. that the council has received. Great. Thank you. All right. Moving on. Uh, council listed items. First item is mine, RecPro. This is uh, uh, the software program that uh, the Recreation Department uh, has started to utilize and, and came up in conversation regarding permitting and whatnot last, last meeting. Um, unfortunately, uh, Glenna Crockett, our superintendent, could not be here due to an illness in her family, um, but she did give us a report. Now, I, Dean, do you want to go through this or you want me to go through it? Uh, I just, I'd just like to make a quick comment. Sure. Yeah, there's a couple of components to RecPro. We put a tab on the on the website, the cover of the website. Uh, you can go to RecPro right now. It's been used internally for a bunch of years uh, to do uh, processing of pool passes, uh, camp registrations, classes for adults and children. Uh, what we've excuse me, <coughs> what we've added to this recently is the uh, residents can now create a profile by going right online. Uh, view all the course offerings for the fall season, the children, adults, and seniors. You can upload documents, proof of residency, medical releases, uh, proof of age, your COVID-19 vaccine card. So that's all in place now. You can look and view the park and road facility calendar as well uh, in case you're looking to uh, use the facility. Uh, the second component to this is Forte, which is going to handle the financial component. Uh, once Forte is in place, it's going to take seven to 10 days before it's operational. Uh, the problem we're experiencing right now is that they have yet to submit their affirmative action plan as well as their New Jersey business registration. So as soon as we receive that, it's going to take seven to 10 days 
to implement the financial component that will allow residents to take care of everything online and pay whatever they need to pay online as well. So that, that's kind of where we've we really stepped it up over the last couple of weeks to get things in place. And, you know, it should be, should be done relatively soon. And, and as part of her report, uh, Glenna indicated that residents can now log on and set up their own profile. Okay. You can view course offerings from uh, the rec department. Uh, for the fall sessions for children, adults, and seniors. You can upload documents for proof of residency, medical releases, uh, proof of age, COVID-19, vaccine card, et cetera, class registrations. This will start to become available uh, in terms of financial as soon as we get uh, that company online, as Dean mentioned. Uh, it will also give people a view of park and Rota Center facilities and their calendars. The calendar is already up and has most of, if not all, of the current permitted activities in the, in the uh, parks already listed. And again, this is all available. I think it, is it, it's, on, it's, on the, uh, it's on the left menu, right? Of the main, right? It's a tab on the left-hand side of, of the main webpage. Um, and again, they, they're in the process of blocking off all the priority users, and that will be part of our introduction to a new ordinance this evening. Um, and then we will be, they'll be training the staff and we'll be getting started. So I'm very happy that this is way, way down the road. Uh, it's been a long time in coming, and uh, I think it's going to solve a lot of the issues that. Uh, that, that people have experienced uh, in terms of having to go to Rota to pay for classes and things like that. So uh, I'm hopeful that this will, uh, this will do the job. Mr. Mayor? Yes. Just a question from the chair of the Senior Citizen Advisory Board. For anyone that's still comfortable dropping off a check, they can still drop off a check. Yes, absolutely. Yep. Sorry, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Everything that said sounds incredible. Is there a way in the next meeting or two we do a five minute display? That walk through the public on there. Actually, yeah, not, o not only that, and I know Councilman Kaplan and I have talked about this. I, I think both this and, and the SDL for, um, for, for the buildings department, especially, we, we probably should do some type of Zoom education for the community and show people how to do the logons, how to get themselves uh, logged in and setting up accounts both for both uh, SDL uh and for uh and for the rec pro uh so i i think your suggestion is a good one we can do it here we can do it quick and dirty so people see it uh but then i think a, a further education because it, it does take a little time to get through and get and plugged in. without logging in you can see you know what's on the screen right now exactly you can uh, click on you know, the classes for instance and see the program correct you can open that uh, looks like So we're, we're excited about this. We're excited about the SDL in, in terms of the building department and the services that it'll provide to the community. Uh, so we're, we'll start to roll out some educational things for that. And we'll do a, a presentation, short presentation here on all of them. Okay, uh, next is uh, mine as well. Uh, plaque at the Rota Center commemorating the vaccine center. Oh, I'll, I'll go back in a minute. I started, okay. Um, uh, I, I really feel that, that what we experienced there was was absolutely a one-off experience for this township, and I think it I think it needs a mark. I need I think it needs to be uh, celebrated now. Uh, and so I'm asking if if the council is in agreement that we do uh, a, a plaque of some type with a ceremony at the Rota Center. I'd like to include the Holy Name staff uh, that that obviously played an integral role in that. Uh, so if I have, I have all nodding heads here, uh, Dean, if we can start to move forward. Yeah, Mr. Mayor. Uh, that would be, that's a very good idea, Deputy Mayor. Be, be in March. Yeah, yeah. 
Yes, let's see if we can do that. Yeah. Let's yeah, Mr. Mayor, as the yeah. self-appointed uh, chair of the plot committee, <laughs> I'll meet with um meet with yourself with the manager and, oh, okay. and go over a, you know date and time and all that other stuff. That's sure. convenient. Cool. Okay. And, we'll and also uh I want to go back. Uh there's a zoning subcommittee report that we missed. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, the, the zoning subcommittee uh met with uh the Alfred Avenue developer uh to discuss um um his second building. Uh, we also met with um, the mosque to discuss a potential uh, de development in that area for by the mosque for senior housing specific. Um, and uh, we also discussed the Holy Name uh, Hospital's progress. Um, Mr. Deputy Mayor, did I miss anything? No, I was actually I'm Thank sorry, you. on the note of 55 at all, we should have a quick look. Oop. Oh. On behalf of everybody here, we would like to wish Council Member Karen Organ yeah. a happy, happy birthday. And the panel Okay. All right. Um, you done? Perfect. Thank okay, you, sir. Uh, moving on. Uh, code updates, Councilman Kaplan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just as a general matter, uh, uh, we do have codification of our code on for uh, this evening. I've uh, had several people reach out with requests for code updates, and I thought it would be good to have some sort of uh, mechanism in place for residents to uh, send these in, whether it's a subcommittee that's uh, specifically dealing with uh, not just zoning uh, for uh, the zoning subcommittee, but just general code updates as well, that they can review them either, uh, you know, a member from zoning subcommittee meeting with, uh, uh, you know, either myself or someone else and the manager, clerk and attorney just to review suggestions that come in from the public so that we can uh, bring those kinds of code requests to uh, everyone's attention uh, after specific stakeholders have uh, had a chance to weigh in. I would suggest that they probably be sent to the manager as a central repository. And then do any members on council want to be part of a subcommittee to work with the, the manager on those requests? Uh, I volunteer. Mike okay. On. Sorry. I volunteer, Mr. You're, vol Pagan. you're volunteering. <laughs> you're volunteering. Council Member Pagan, Council, Council Member Kaplan. Is that, that good? We'll have those two and the manager? Yes. Mr. Mayor? Yes, go ahead. Um, while the committee meets and makes any changes, there was an, a notation I noted where the date for reorganization was noted for January 1st when actually we were just notified that it was actually within that week. So we don't have to actually meet on New Year's Day. So um, hopefully that will be one of the changes you, you will make an adjustment for. Okay. All right. Okay, moving on. <laughs> Park bathrooms, Councilman Kaplan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. As uh, you're probably aware, Phelps, uh, uh, park now has the modular bathrooms. Uh, the idea being that you prepare the area, they bring the uh, bathroom completely made on a truck, lift it up, drop it on the pipes, and uh, after the various uh, inspections and whatnots, it's uh, good to go. I think we uh, learned uh, many things. It was in my backyard, so I had a chance to walk the dogs and uh, see this thing uh, progress day by day. Uh, but now that we've uh, learned where some of the hiccups and things to look for on this are, I'd like to uh, uh, engage the PPRAB and uh, REC and various uh, people. I know that uh, Voti is certainly in need. I think that's a special case that should proceed in parallel, but I'd like them to uh, identify based on both current use and optimal use for uh, where the parks could be if they're uh, being used at their highest and best way on where we should do bathrooms first. I'd like to see uh, uh, 
uh, similar bathrooms uh, put into every park, um, you know, to do as many as we can per year and uh, uh, do upgrades alongside them. Councilman, do you want PPRAB to select a specific spot in each park? Is that what you want? To do a recommendation on where, even better. Yeah, uh, more info, ASAP. the better. ASAP. A ASAP, before someone has to go, if possible. Mayor? Go ahead. If I could, we, we do have a six year plan for parks. We prioritized. Again, the goal is every year. Um, we go in order, uh, we renovate the park, new playground equipment, new sprinkler system, uh, new bathrooms and a rubberized surface. Again, you're looking at one point, probably two million, one point three million dollars. So there is a plan in place. Uh, we, we just have to implement it and we have to allocate the money. So we do have a pecking order for the priority of parks that's already already done. And I think that went through PPRAP. Yes, yes, it did. And in addition, I correct me if I'm wrong, Dean, isn't in the um, in the capital budget the uh, the Voti North bathroom? Yes, that's in the that's in the current capital budget right. and in the plan design phase. And not to get on on capital, but the Voti Park pool and the amenities will be uh, something I'm going to ask council to approve for 2023 capital. Okay. All right, Mr. Mayor. Yes. Um, and Dean, as you mentioned that schedule, is that something that's available or that can be made available um, to residents so that they can see the plan and proposal of which parks and the order, just as we do with our street paving, so residents are aware of uh, what order that's taking place? Sure. With, with, uh, with the parks, I believe in our six-year plan, it does identify uh, the parks uh, that we want to do in specific order. Uh, but it's in the plan, so you have to actually go through the plan to find it, or is there no, a way No, it's to... right on, it's on our um, budget page on, mm -hmm. on the website. Uh, if you go to budget 2022 budget, you'll see the mm -hmm. six-year capital uh, plan, and it will show the pecking order for the parks that we want to do every year. With regards to road resurfacing, again, this is the time of year that we uh, start evaluating the roadways. Uh, so we're doing that now uh, for the commencement of the 2022 road resurfacing project in 2023. So we're in the process now of evaluating the streets, uh, probably late September, or sometime in October, we'll finalize it, we'll publicize it, we'll put the list on the township's website. I'll of course mention it during my manager's report so that it will be there. And of course, all the Utility companies will be notified of the streets we intend to do um, because they become moratorium streets and they're not supposed to do any utility work for a period of five years. Okay. And finally, online programming, Councilman Kaplan. I believe you covered all that with the rec with, pro. With the rec uh, pro and other yeah. stuff? Okay. Okay. I that in. Okay, good. All right. Uh, Township Manager's Report. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Just a quick update on COVID. As of August 26th, we have 11,431 cases. We're averaging roughly 8.7 a day. So the numbers are still there. The positivity rate is still there. Uh, and this is according to the CDRS system, the Communicable Disease Reporting System. Um, I hope everyone's excited. TNEC Day is coming up on Sunday, September 18th. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. This is a wonderful community event for all of us to get together. Uh, I hope and pray for, war uh, for warm, dry weather. The rain date is October 2nd, Sunday, October 2nd. Again, we're going to have the fireworks display by the Grucci uh, family at 815. So this takes place at 2 to 8. We're going to have plenty of rides, games, music. Uh, Reggie Pippen's going to do the jazz concert at 7 o'clock. We have a dunk tank, displays, exhibits, food trucks. Uh, so there's a lot to do that day. Uh, we're uh, trying to get as many restaurants as we can, local restaurants in town, uh, to showcase their food. Uh, and we're going to do that inside Gym 1 of the Rota Center. So we have room for roughly 30 restaurants to set up. No cooking allowed. You have to be licensed with the Township's Health Department. You can bring prepared foods, keep warm with sternos, uh, the cold food, of course, with ice. Could even be beverages. Uh, uh, a coffee shop that wants to come there and sell, not a problem. Uh, you just need to reach out to my assistant, Luis DePaz, uh, at extension 1003, or you can email him 
as well. So again, I want to get as many people out as we can. It's going to be a, a great day. I'm looking forward to it. And we have our very own uh, DJ Doug uh, that will be spinning records for us again this year. Uh, as a warm up to this event, uh, the night before uh, September 17 at 7.45 p.m., we're going to have movie under the stars that takes place at the Boti Park Sportsplex. Um, that's free of charge to everyone. Uh, popcorn will be served free of charge and just a great night again to get the community together, bring your chair, bring your blanket, and it will be shown on a large uh, screen inside the Sportsplex Stadium. Um, September 11th, of course, is our 9-11 Memorial that will be held on the uh, at the municipal building in the parking lot this year. Uh, it takes place at 820 a.m. Uh, and again, uh, we're going to uh, recognize the 21st anniversary and and never forget the um, the souls that were lost that day, especially the 18 Teaneck residents. Um, as I just mentioned about roadway resurfacing again, please monitor the township's website. Uh, we have about seven streets remaining in uh, this calendar year uh, to mill and pave. Uh, there's still some striping that needs to be done. That will be done within the next next several weeks. Uh, the Alfred Avenue project, again, that road is going to be completely milled and paved. That was awarded to at the DLS. We have a pre-con meeting taking place next week. So that work should begin shortly. That's about a three-quarter of a million dollar project for the town that we received grant money for at no expense to the to the taxpayers. Um, we're applying for an NJDOT grant uh, to do all of Fike Lane. That will cover from Teaneck Road all the way down to Glenwood Avenue. Uh, we're going to get 134,000 in grant monies from CDBG to uh, resurface two streets in town, Prospect Terrace in Arlington. That will take place in 2023 as well. Just a quick to you in park update. Um, unfortunately, the contract is not going to be on site until September 12th to resume work. Um, apparently, uh, we're told the rock climbing equipment uh, was not delivered, but was recently delivered and they're going to begin on September 12th. I've been in communication with our attorney uh, regarding the project delay and uh, possible performance bond uh, penalties. So we're in those discussions, but I want to get this project done. The installation of playground equipment will take place. They do the rubberized surface um, and um, hopefully everything will be good to go the second to third week in, in October. Uh, the new band shell should be delivered in about two weeks. That's going to take four to six weeks for installation that's going to be followed by uh, new uh, new concrete and new asphalt pads in that area that's going to look beautiful when it's done um, tri-state light and energy recently installed the, the hvac system at the rota center for us that's all part of that psng energy efficient program and i'm happy to say that most if not all of our buildings uh, have the energy efficient upgrades lighting boilers HVAC system. So uh, we received in some cases uh, a 70% discount that PSNG paid for a lot of this, a lot of the upgrades. Uh, the affordable housing seminar is going to take place on September 22nd. Uh, Frank Piazza will conduct that. That will be done uh, via virtual platform. I will be sending out very soon information on how to connect. Uh, there's going to be room, I think, for 500 participants. Um, we're working on the specs for tree planting. Uh, that advertisement uh, is going to be sent out uh, probably within the next week, and we should be able to award it uh, on or about September 20th. Um, I, I had a great meeting with the Penn Avenue residents about a week and a half ago. Uh, great people, and this is in reference to the tree planting, and we came up with uh, a, a tree that we think is going to be best for, for the area. It's called a domestic autumn blaze maple. Uh, a fantastic tree that provides excellent shade and it transitions in color actually during the year from a, a greenish color to a reddish uh, orange. Grows uh, about three to five feet a year. We're going to try to purchase trees right now at a size of 10 to 12 feet. It grows to about 40 feet or so and it shouldn't uh, have any, it shouldn't interfere with any of the power lines in that area on the south side of the block. But we spent a lot of time with this, had uh, multiple meetings with the residents had a lot of great input. I think they're very happy with this. Uh, I'm happy with it, but this will all be part of the uh, the specs that go out. We plan on, I think, purchasing well over 100 trees and doing about 60 on Penn 
and another 40 throughout the town for people that requested trees or trees that came down uh, during the year. Uh, we're going to be awarding the Court Street project to a company called Four Cleanup. Uh, we're going to have a pre-con on that. Again, that's going to make Court Street one way going west, uh, and that will add about 20 plus parking spots uh, with the new design of, of Court Street. And the next confidential paper shredding event is September 17th and 18th. Uh, that takes place in a municipal parking lot from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. or until the truck is filled again at September 17th and 18th. Uh, and all the, I'm happy to say, the, the improvements on Columbus Drive uh, were completed. Uh, the speed hump should be installed within the next uh, few weeks as well. And lastly, Mayor, the police dispatch 911 public safety answering point uh, facility is about two to three weeks away from from completion, and again, that brings nine one one back to TNEC, and that concludes Great. my report. Okay, thank you very much. All right, Town Township Attorney's report. Other than what was discussed in the closed session, I would to wish Councilman Oregon a happy birthday again. Uh, there's nothing further to report. Okay. All right, formal meeting items. Public hearing and adoption of ordinances. Mr. Mayor. Deputy Mayor Schwartz. I'd like to make a motion that we relist, re notice, and relist ordinance 40 2022 for the September 20th meeting. It's been moved and seconded to move the ordinance number 40 2022 to the September 2020 meeting. That was the first from Deputy Mayor Schwartz, the second from Councilman McGon. Councilman Rami Rice? Yes. Councilman McGon? Councilman Oregon? Abstain. Councilman Kaplan? Looking forward to hearing it. Uh, Deputy yes. Mayor Schwartz? Yes. Deputy Mayor Katz? Yes. Mayor Dunleavy? No. We'll see it on the 20th. Okay. Uh, clerk, if you could read. Titles. Absolutely, Mayor. So we are excluding Ordinance 40 that's been tabled to September 20th. We still have a few other ordinances we are second reading this evening. We have Ordinance Number 21 2022, adopting a revision and codification of the ordinances in the Township of Teaneck. We have Ordinance Number 37 2022, amending Section 36 1 of Article 1 of Chapter 36 in Town Traffic of the Township Code respecting the designation of Court Street as a one-way street. We have ordinance number 38-2022, amending section 36-112 of Division 1 of Article 2 of Chapter 36 in total traffic of the Township Code adding restricted on-street parking spaces for the handicap at 1115 Cooper Ave. We have ordinance number 39-2022, authorizing the private sale of lot one in block 1618 as shown in the tax map of the Township of Teaneck presumed to NJSA 40A 12-13. And those are all the ordinances, second reading this evening, Mayor. All right, thank you. All right, so now we're gonna open up a hearing uh, on just ordinances, numbers 21, 37, 38, and 39. We'll be alternating, if anyone has comments, we'll be alternating between chambers and on Zoom. You'll have three minutes to speak. So at this point, anyone who wishes to uh, speak on any of these ordinances. So those of you here, if you have anybody here wants, wants to speak, they can raise their hand. Good evening, Alan Stone, Teaneck resident. Uh, with any ordinance, we should ask why it's being passed. How will it be applied? And are the changes fair and reasonable? To start, there is not one explanation, let alone a whereas clause in Ordinance 21 for any of the several dozen changes in more than 30 pages, most of which are utterly trivial typo corrections. Next, will these overall changes in the code even be followed? Let's look at history. Section 3334 on affordable housing has some minor changes, but what's not changed is paragraph two, which still states, quote, low and moderate income units shall be integrated with the market units. The illegal segregation in the Kushner's Haloop application was clearly pointed out to the planning board. Uh, 
And despite that, that board voted in favor of that illegally segregated development. When residents came to this council to protest, Keith Kaplan insisted that the law didn't need to be followed. Keith brazenly dared residents to sue. We did, we won. Haluba will be fully integrated, even though Keith Kaplan said it was impossible. But this ordinance is even worse. Ellie Katz said on May 31st that he drove around town and that, quote, nine out of 10 homes are susceptible to a complaint by a code harassment officer. At that same meeting, Keith Kaplan said, we have so many laws on the books, we can find violations anywhere. Now he's turning that threat into a cash cow. Keith Kaplan fixed the code and now he wants to hit you with a general penalty in section 1-6 with a maximum fine that has been quadrupled to $2,000 what would be a crushing financial burden for most residents. Most of the time, we never find out who's to blame, but Keith has been bragging that this ordinance and raising the general penalty is one of his accomplishments over the past four years. This isn't about fixing problems. It's a way to abuse residents and take money out of their pockets, $2,000 at a time. We know that the data shows that the people who are hit with these fines are disproportionately poor and minority. These are the people that Keith Kaplan is targeting, knowing full well that many of his victims will be unable to pay their fines. I will do everything possible to oppose anyone who supports passage of this ordinance as is. I will fight against the hypocrisy of people who claim to be against enforcing laws and then brazenly pan, plan to pit neighbors against neighbors against each other to impose $2,000 fines. Tonight, how can any of you on council vote for an ordinance with such crushing fines? How can anybody support fines that can go up to $2,000 as a tax, an unfair tax on innocent residents? Please. Anybody on Zoom? Okay. Yes. Hi, Hillary Goldberg. One of the changes in Ordinance 21 is related to underage drinking. Underage drinking is a serious public health problem in the United States. Alcohol is the most widely used substance among Americans' youth, and drinking by young people poses enormous health and safety risks. The consequences of underage drinking can affect everyone, regardless of age or drinking status. According to the National Institute on Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism in 2019, 7 million people ages 12 to 21 report that they drink alcohol just beyond a few sips in the month prior to their survey. While youth drink less often than adults, when they do, they end up drinking more and are often binge drinking. Some of the health risks associated with underage drinking are impaired judgment, which results in injuries, which may require those individuals to need medical assistance. Many youth avoid calling emergency services when they are involved in an illegal act, including underage drinking due to a fear of arrest and prosecution. Therefore, I do cement, uh, support the amendment to section 4-5.1 of the Township Code. For those members of the public that did not read through the 30 pages of code change, under the new change, a person under the age of 21 will now be immune from prosecution for underage drinking if one of the persons drinking is in need of medical assistance and 911 is called and the person who calls 911 fully cooperates with the police and emergency medical services. Additionally, the person receiving medical services will also be immune from prosecution. This change is a great change to encourage youth who need help to call without fear, and that the focus is on their physical well being and not criminal prosecution. My question to the council is How is the council planning to roll this change out to educate the teenagers and parents of Teaneck about these changes? Neither will be reading the town code. Will the council be working with the Board of Education, with Fairleigh Dickinson University, and with the private school parents to have a forum to let the underage youth know that the township is concerned with their safety when they are in trouble more than prosecuting them? Is the Board of Education aware of the change to the code? If the youth of this town do not know about their, this change, will they seek help when they are in need of it? Why is a change like this a good change, may I add, buried in a code document that no one except a few will read? There are so many true opportunities for transparency, and I see so many people saying your voice will be heard. Why wasn't their voice heard for the last four years? For this change, parents, police, TVAC, perhaps even Holy Name Hospital, all probably have questions and concerns about this change. Their voice matters too. 
I ask that the council table this ordinance, work with the stakeholders to make sure that the township knows about these changes, allow people to ask questions, make sure it's clear that this is not to encourage underage drinking, but to strive to make sure that those that do partake, get help that they need and be safe. Thank you. Anyone on Zoom? Okay, yeah, we'll close the public hearing and I'll ask council, anyone have any comments? Councilman Kaplan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, for the public's edification, if they haven't heard me uh, speak on this yet, uh, codification is part of the process of good government. Uh, what winds up happening is the last time our code was codified was in 1951 for a full codification and then reviewed in 1964. When the state changes a law and it forces TNEC, uh, which uh, does not have the authority uh, under state law to uh, violate state statute, our law is technically still on the books, but unenforceable. What codification does is goes through the code to ensure that you are in compliance with state code. Now, uh, what the two speakers brought up were actually very important issues. Uh, the part of this that has taken three years is that the a document was created, which went back and forth with the attorneys. This is the editorial and legal analysis, which uh, I posted on my own blog and was available to anybody to see. And I had you know, offered uh, the two people that spoke as well as others to go through every single issue. Now, uh, I do uh, agree, but I, uh, you know, I, I disagree with uh, Ms. Goldberg because I, I don't like the alcohol uh, ordinance that we're modifying. I thought that it should be modeled like the state drug uh, statute, which gives full blanket immunity for anyone who calls 911. I thought that's a good public policy stance. This has several requirements. It turns out we are not allowed to do that. The uh, section that deals with it in the editorial analysis is on page 67, it's 4-002, and it talks about how public law 2009-C-133 requires these various uh, requirements under NJSA 40 colon uh, 48-1.2a. Now, if you go to that statute, which can be found uh, right here, it will literally show the text of the state statute, uh, which is now going to be mirrored in our code. This is the uh, a requirement for what we're allowed to do. So in terms of is a the Board of Ed or various others uh, aware of this, this is literally the state statute that everyone has been operating under and the state code, it, uh, the TNAC code itself has been wrong for all these years. Now for the uh, general provision that the gentleman spoke about uh, regarding uh, the statutes uh, and the amount that was being charged, in fact, the editorial analysis shows that NJSA 40-49-5 had been updated. And if you go to the state law, it says specifically, adopt and enforce local police ordinances of all kinds and impose uh, one or more of the following penalties, fines not exceeding $2,000. It's a state statute. We're required to comply with the state statutes, and this is part of governance. Uh, what this document does not have in it is any kind of change Councilman that is Kaplan. substantive. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Deputy Mayor. Can, can I just ask uh, Councilman Kaplan, since he was the author of, of uh, this ordinance, can he just address in simple English, the two thousand dollar violations that was mentioned by one of the speakers, uh, and I if that was the one, I, I, didn't, I didn't quite understand. In simple the, English, is, is, are you saying is this something that we're adding, or is this something that's already there? It, this we had a section in the code regarding the amounts. The state statute requires that all five hundred sixty five municipalities in the state of New Jersey have a set amount, which is the two thousand dollars. This brings us into compliance with the state statute, which we had to abide by anyway. Now our code says it in the letter. But if we didn't okay. do it, though, I mean. We would not be in compliance with state uh, right. my, law. My as concern, we obviously, been. is hurting residents with with the uh, enforcement. You know that that's big on you know. So, 
I believe our attorney is uh, just so you can our, just, yep, the bottom ahead. line is that as the council, as Councilman Kaplan said, the state law requires us to have all of these changes or a lot of the changes that are in the new code. This specific one with respect to the penalty is set by state statute and the judge has discretion as to what penalty to meet out. And, you know, what I'm hearing is there's no confidence in our judges. And that's absurd because we have two of the finest municipal court judges uh, in the in the township of Teaneck. Uh, so the, the judges are doing their job wonderfully. Judge John Blood, Judge Randazzo are doing a wonderful job. Uh, I don't, I've heard no complaints since either of them were appointed. I, I think the manager can concur with me. I was shocked. Judge Young would be uh, and that's very, and, and, and Judge Young was a legend, also a wonderful judge, but I'm, you know, it's not, it's not uncommon in the municipality to get complaints about your municipal court judges. They meet out justice in a very fair manner, just like their predecessor, Judge Young did. And I think it's absurd to, for anyone to come up here and make a comment that we're imposing uh, a $2,000 fine on the backs of residents. That is not what's happening. The judge, if they deem, if he or she deems the offense to be sufficient, can do up to $2,000. There will be an occasion at some time where somebody will get a fine of that matter if they do something extremely egregious, but only in that situation. Normally, that would never happen. Uh, but so, the important point, as Deputy Katz, uh, Deputy Mayor Katz said, it, it doesn't matter if we update the code to what's correct or not. The judge is required to operate within the bounds of the law. The bounds are, of the law say a max of 2,000. They already we had are that bringing discretion. our code into compliance. That's it. Correct, Council. They already had that discretion. Right. Mr. Okay. Mayor, I have a question. Yes, go um, ahead. So the maximum is two thousand dollars, correct? That does not mean that that's what the judge would necessarily oh, have right. to impose. Absolutely. So that is just the the maximum, okay? Um, and then the other point I just wanted to make that um, while it's an opportunity, I believe that um, Ms. Goldberg was trying to say about sharing this information, since it is a change, we do have Tomas, we have an advisory board um, in terms of drug and and uh, substance abuse. Is that something that we could ensure that um, working with those groups, working with our schools, that it is an awareness as we continue? Um, I understand that we have some opioid money that may be coming our way. Oh, wonderful. Right. So isn't that something that we could perhaps make sure that an educational component could be added? And I think to underscore your point, I think the fact that this council has created and maintains the Municipal Alliance Against Substance Abuse and the various uh, ways that we promote it uh, shows that in fact we do in deed and in money and in volunteering. And uh, you know, certainly if anyone is of the opinion that they think uh, we're uh, not, uh, you know, we certainly care about our kids and you know, that's uh, top priority. Yep. So I, I hope that that was, I, that's my takeaway is that it could be continuously shared. Thanks. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Then I'll entertain a motion to. I'd like to make a motion to put forward ordinances 21-2022, 37-2022, 38 dash 2022 39 dash 2022 and I'm that's it, there, right? that's it. Yeah. second Schwartz oh, sorry. second council member Pagan okay. call a roll council Rice. Yes. Councilman Pagan yes. Councilman Oregon yes Councilman Kaplan yes Deputy Mayor Schwartz yes Deputy Mayor Katz yes with an abstention on 37 2022 and Mayor Yes. 37, you said, Deputy Mayor? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. All right. We'll move now to public good and welfare, where we will hear from the public. You will have three minutes to speak. Um, the clerk will be keeping the time. I will be switching between uh, the chamber and uh, Zoom. And before I forget, and I'm, I was remiss in doing this earlier, uh, we have two people in the audience I wanna recognize. One is Daniel Gee, a Board of Ed member, and uh, Councilman Carpenter from Bergenfield. Welcome. Pagoda. Oh, uh, then I wouldn't have, if I knew that, I wouldn't have said anything. <laughs> Anyway, welcome. I'm sorry. Am I good to go? Nope. Nope. Oh, nice. Nope. Nope. I didn't know. I just recognized you, acknowledged oh, you. Okay. Please, I will call you soon. Okay. 
Who would like to speak in the chamber? Ms. Gee, go ahead. Thank you. I think you just wanted me to do some exercise. <laughs> um, so good evening, Mayor. Oh, Danielle G, TNAC resident. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, I just wanted to share three comments. Um, first, I wanted to take a moment to just acknowledge the great partnership that occurred this week between the Board of Ed, several council members, our leaders in the TNAC school district, and several leaders in our private schools that we work with. Um, as members of the public might have heard, the Board of Ed had a serious transportation challenge occur when our bus companies decided not to renew our non-public school bus routes. Um, with the start of school just a couple of weeks away, we had to scramble to find a solution to ensure that the affected families would be able to find transportation for their students. I'm happy to share that we were able to find a solution and are currently working out the logistics to, to make sure that we can get all the kids on the buses. We were able to do that relatively quickly due to the partnership of all involved. This type of collaboration is what I envisioned when I joined the school board, community members and community leaders coming together to meet the needs of our residents. This type of collaboration demonstrates TNEC at its best, working together towards a goal, helping residents achieve the outcomes that they need. I'm hoping we can all learn something from this experience and continue to model this kind of collaboration in the future. Um, two other quick comments just from listening to the meeting today. Um, really excited to hear that the new band shell is coming up. I remember the old band shell had some really great artwork from local residents. I'm hoping that, and I'm, apologies if this was mentioned in a previous meeting, but I'm hoping that there will be an opportunity, oh, I already see, <laughs> to, to uh, do that again. So happy to see that picture. And then finally, um, quick comment, um, also want to acknowledge the great work of Holy Name Hospital throughout the COVID pandemic um, under the leadership of Michael Marin. I think a commemorative plaque at the Rota Center would be phenomenal. Um, that said, given the recent tensions with Holy Name neighbors and in the spirit of community engagement and collaboration, I, I just wanted to ask the council to consider just consulting with the residents to ensure um, you know, their buy-in before renaming the street. Um, thank you for your time. Thank you. Okay, Zoom. I have one hand on Zoom right now. Hangel, I'm bringing in Hangel. I didn't start your clock. I just. Uh... Hangel, whenever you're ready, please speak your name into the record and we will start the clock. Hi, good evening. My name is Maxine Angel. I'm not sure if you can see me. Thank you. I don't, is he? Oh, okay. Hello. Hi, good evening. He, okay. We can't can hear you. you. We can't. Can, can you hear me now? You're very low. Put okay. that microphone Let a little closer. See. All right, let's see here. Sorry. All right. Uh, Still can't hear you. Can't hear you. All right. I, Let, all right. There might be something with your microphone. All right, let's hold her for one we're gonna second. Hold, we're going to hold your place while you figure out that microphone, and we're going to go to someone in person here. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay, I think I got it fixed. I'm not sure if that's working. My name is Lynn Ofran, and I've been a resident of Teaneck for almost 40 years, and I'm on the board of trustees of the number one no-kill pet shelter in Bergen County. During the last three years, I've helped over 30 families adopt from reputable shelters and rescues, and I don't charge for my services. I'd like to take a few minutes to raise awareness on the impact of allowing a pet store to open in Teaneck. The owner of the building being rented is Mr. Michael Fedita, the owner of J&J &J Pharmacy, to Alexandra Hoffman. It seems that the space on Cedar Lane has been rented for the purpose of supposedly viewing puppies. However, please be aware that viewers are then likely to be directed to Wayne's puppy store in Wayne for purchase, which she owns. These puppies are the offsprings of dogs that are overbred in puppy mills by backyard breeders who claim they are legitimate. And no reputable breeder would ever sell their puppies to a pet store. The puppies' mothers and fathers are often discarded or euthanized when they can no longer procreate. The puppies are separated too young from their mothers, and the repercussions show up as severe behavior and anxiety issues. 
The puppy mill industry is poorly regulated by the USDA under the Animal Welfare Act. At best, it provides minimal survival regulations for the commercial breeding of dogs. And to give you an example, breeding dogs are legally caged their entire lives, packed in with other dogs, or left outside in inclement weather year round. The mistreatment of the puppies, mothers and fathers is inhumane and heartbreaking. However, too many people still purchase puppies unaware of the cruelty to these animals. I adopted a dog named Beatrix from Ramapo Bergen Animal Refuge. For five years, she lived in a puppy mill producing puppies for pet stores. Due to very little food and no medical care, she arrived at the shelter with severe heartworm disease. She died way too young this past November from this heart condition due to that mistreatment. Fortunately, my shelter and many others rescue these mother and father dogs, pay exorbitant amounts for their medical care to bring them back to health, and then find them forever homes. In closing, just like California and now New York City, we need to pass laws that regulate and reform the puppy mill industry and stop the atrocities that are being committed against these innocent animals. Let's remember that animals are God's creatures, they deserve our compassion, and we cannot close our eyes and pretend this situation doesn't exist. I urge you to take action. Let's be the kind of town that leads the way and sing to it that our canine companions are treated humanely. Thank you. Thank you. Someone on Zoom? I don't have any hands on Zoom right now, Mayor. Uh, okay. Right now, Mayor, sorry. Okay. Yes? Oh, yes, oh, we have. Hold on. I'm sorry. Miss Maxine Angel, yeah. can we get a mic check one, two from you, please? Hi, good evening. Oh, you sound a little better. I don't know All what right. you did, but it sounds a little better. Good don't evening. sit down. <laughs> Can you do that again for me real quick, Miss Angel? Can you hear me, everyone? Is it working? Is the, yeah, go ahead, yell at us. <laughs> Can you hear it? Can I go ahead? <laughs> You're good to go. All right, go ahead. Okay. All right, good evening. Hi, thank you so much for the time. Thank you to the Teaneck Town Council for your service to our community. Um, happy birthday. This is Mays, many healthy returns of the day. And of course, happy birthday to Councilwoman Organ as well. Um, my name is Maxine Angel. I am proud to be a newly elected um, Republican Municipal Committee person for District 3. My husband, Chaim, and I are very, um, very honored okay. to be able to have the opportunity to serve our district, regardless Perfect. of the political affiliations of our constituents, we serve everybody. Um, I'm coming to you this evening to talk about the um, expansion of Holy Name Hospital, which I'm not sure if you're aware that District 3 is the hospital district. And this is a major consensus issue that affects so many in our neighborhood. And I, um, I've spoken to so many people. I have had the opportunity to speak with people going door to door. And the main issue that affects all of them is the um, is the hospital expansion and your um, the feeling that you as a town council collectively have not listened to the residents and have instead pushed through ordinances to allow the hospital to expand without any sort of boundaries. So this is the communication that I'm bringing on behalf of my constituents. And I just wanted to read um, two articles from the New Jersey constitution, which is that uh, article one, all persons are by nature free and independent and have certain natural and unalienable rights, among which are those of enjoying and defending life and liberty, of acquiring, possessing, and protecting property, and of pursuing and obtaining safety and happiness. Article 2A, all political power is inherent in the people. Government is instituted for the protection, security, and benefit of the people, and they have the right at all times to alter or reform the same whenever the public good may require it. So I know in my oath of office, um, we uh, swore an oath to uh, protect and uphold the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the state of New Jersey. And I'm aware that your oaths of office say something similar. I take my oath very seriously and I hope you, uh, you know, I know you do as well. So I just wanted to remind us all that we're working together for the good of our community and uh, enabling our residents to um, 
possess and protect our own property. So I just wanted to ask a few questions. Um, do any of you on the town council reside in the hospital district? So I'm not sure if you're allowed to answer it. If you have to answer it, I just wanna put it out there. I wanna know if any of you reside in the, in the hospital district. So to my knowledge, I don't think any of you do. Um, it would be nice to have you come by. You're welcome anytime. I'm at 627 Queen Anne Road, the greenhouse on the corner of Queen Anne and Johnson. Um, I also want to know if you have spent uh, real time listening to the concerns of the residents. Your, your, time, your time is up. Thank you. It's up? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Angel. If you weren't able to finish your statement, please send it to clerk at tnecnj.gov and we'll be sure to get it in cancel, council's hands immediately. Clerk at tnecnj.gov. All right. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for having me. Uh, my name is Julie Cardonic Rosen. I've been a TNAC resident for 28 years. And my goal in speaking here tonight is to educate and inform the public. Uh, a September 2016 People Magazine article about Puppy Mills mentions by name the owner of Wayne Puppies. Her name is Alexandra Hoffman, and he writes about Wayne Puppies, uh, that Wayne Puppies had been selling puppies from two kennels cited by the USDA for significant violations. Uh, one of them was for keeping small dogs outside in sub-freezing temperatures, and the other was for shooting dogs in the head at close range as a form of euthanasia. The article also wrote that Wayne Puppies was selling puppies from an Oklahoma breeder cited by the USDA for numerous violations of the Animal Welfare Act. The hard facts are that 3 million animals are euthanized in US shelters every year while they're waiting for loving homes, while about 2 million puppies are produced by puppy mills annually. Puppy mills are located all across the country, including right here in New Jersey. They're bred here or they're shipped here to supply pet stores with puppies to sell and all pet store puppies are puppy mill puppies. Legitimate breeders do exist, but they're very difficult to find and they never sell to pet stores. If puppy mills didn't exist, there would be 75% fewer dogs in our shelters across the country. That is the significant impact the puppy mills have on overpopulation of dogs. As Lynn said, these mother and father dogs never get to step foot on grass. They almost never get the chance to experience sunshine. Responsible breeders breed maybe one or two litters a year, maybe four or five pets, uh, four or five puppies in each litter. They take care of their dogs. They love their dogs. They are not the problem. Puppy mills are the problem. We need to follow the example of New York City and of California. And we need to lead on this issue, not be known as the town that brushed it under the rug and allowed the sale of puppies that come from puppy mills in our town. Thank you. I, I got a hand on Zoom there. Go ahead. Bring in Denise Belcher. Hi, good evening. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I just wanted to chime in and just um, uh, kind of speak a little bit about the renewable energy discussion that we had earlier today. And I just want to give kudos to, to um, Paula and um, friends at CCNA that, um, you know, it, it's a very important that we really address partnerships and uh, really kind of explore everything that we can to, to engage in alternative energy. I think it's it's uh, we can only just turn on the six o'clock news to see how energy impacts um, us all, in particular our neighbors throughout different parts of of, of the country. So kudos to um, Paula and her team for really being vigilant in in terms of um, making the decision to um, to bring this to our township, and um, I really think that it's important that we continue. Uh, at all costs to um, to engage in this discussion. Um, I just want to uh, uh, speak for a minute about uh, the AINR, the um, areas in need of redevelopment. I think we're really kind of uh, needing to look at, I know that you guys have tabled a couple things for September. I just want to speak, however, to the fact that um, 
It is the uh, areas in need of redevelopment um, method of plan uh, planning or development within our township um, is kind of riddled with issues that I believe that are uh, that are not clear cut criteria for what we need to be looking at in terms of development. Uh, it creates a less than ideal litmus test for development. We need to use smart development tools and techniques, and the major tool is that of a master plan. Developing using areas in need of redevelopment uh, incentivizes absentee landlords um, who have um, not um, uh, the best interests of our township in mind. Uh, I think rather than uh, the use of, uh, of a code enforcement uh, should be our guide to uh, basically ensuring that property owners are keeping up with their, with their properties. Um, I strongly encourage the council to take a serious look at the engagement of a comprehensive plan, uh, returning to the master plan. Uh, in the last 18 months there, you have uh, uh, indicated nine areas of need, in need of redevelopment. Um, five of which are in the Northeast. And I think that in and of itself is an issue. I think there are, that there are areas in, uh, in other business districts from Cedar Lane, Javura Avenue and the Plaza that visually can uh, be looked at as blighted or less than appealing properties. So we should all be concerned for residential neighbors whose properties um, that are being checkered with uh, next to properties that are in need of, of redevelopment and those that are not. So I implore the council to really take a comprehensive look at developing by way of areas in need of redevelopment. Thank you and have a good evening. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Miss in the back who first spoke, what was your name? I missed it in the record. Lynn, you got it. Thank you. Sorry. Hi, hello, Goldstein, uh, Teaneck resident for 30 years. It's not, this, is a, this is another one about the uh, Wayne Puppy Store. I'm in possession of the application for zoning permit that the uh, store filed and related documents. And it raises questions about how the permit was ever issued to begin with. The front page of the uh, application says, is a live pet store, puppies only. Uh, a follow-up letter, August 20, October 21st, from the owner says, if at any case, the animal is not fit for sale, we will set the animal for adoption. It's clear this is a store that was established to sell puppies, a direct violation of Article 11, Chapter 6 of uh, the Teaneck Ordinance. So how is it that a month later, the permit was granted by the uh, assistant zoning officer? And again, the new business is called a live pet store. How could that happen? Did the, did the, does the clerk not know the law? What if the uh, application for zoning was for a drug dealership? Would that have been given? How could this happen? What safeguards are there going forward to make sure it doesn't happen again? So that needs to be answered. Uh, on top of that, uh, I think it's important to note that Teenex policy as demonstrated by the prohibition against selling the um, dogs is that we don't wanna take part in the potential uh, uh, problems regarding breeders. Teenex shouldn't be involved in that and if there's a mistake that caused the, these people to be issued permits, we should do whatever we possibly can to not allow this to happen going forward, but also to stop this from happening now. Litigation, uh, another ordinance, whatever you can, or else um, you're not uh, following through with not just the spirit of the ordinance, but with the will of the people. And I guess of the council that got the ordinance passed. Thank you. Thank what you. What is your name, sir? I'm sorry. Hillel Goldstein. I got a hand on Zoom. Go ahead. I am bringing in Rosalie Greenberg. Can you hear me? I'm in clear. Uh, starting your timer now. Uh, can you see me? Nope. I don't know how to put on the camera here. All right, I'll just talk. Okay, I'll, I'm talking about the uh, <clears throat> renewable energy. So um, I don't think uh, the country in general is ready for renewable energy. 
Uh, most of our energy comes from uh, coal and gas. Uh, there is clean gas. I think if we're going to be using renewable energy, we're not going to have heat in the winter or uh, air conditioning in the summer. Uh, I think uh, President Obama, he really doesn't care. He doesn't think that the sea is rising because he built a very big uh, house right on the uh, Cape Cod shore. And uh, now we're, we're trying to get our renewable, our energy, our gas from Saudi Arabia, Venezuela, even China, and they don't care anything about the environment. So, okay, so that's my point. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Okay, we'll go over here. Go ahead. Start in the bottom corner. It's cold in here. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to make it quick. My name is Randy Glover. I'm the chairman and executive director of All Access Community Development Corporation. Uh, my office is at 800 Catawba uh, Avenue here in Teaneck. Um, my primary uh, business there is food uh, insecurity and sustainability for seniors. Um, as some of you might know, um, I've been active in uh, delivering food services to seniors and uh, the Bergen County community for the last couple of years. I've been working with uh, um, Holy Name Hospital and about 20 other organizations to deliver food in one in one and a half, about one quarter. We did about three, three quarters of a million dollars worth of food delivery. <clears throat> We're also looking to uh, deliver food to seniors here in Teaneck specifically. And that would be for seniors 62 and older, um, ha handicapped or disabled, as well as unemployed and underemployed. Those would be the guidelines. Uh, as you know, the AMI for, um, for Teaneck or for Bergen County, when you say low income, Low income is actually $63,000 a year, I believe, for a single individual, $38,000 for um, a single individual, which would be uh, very low and extremely low is about $28,000. So I think when we start talking about um, affordability and you know who's, who's middle class, who's lower class, and you start looking at what the figures actually are because we live in a, a high income community, uh, that's what affects who is able to get services. Uh, so I just wanted to introduce myself. Uh, Counselor, thank you for our platitude of uh, my uncle, <laughs> Judge Young. Um, and, and also I recognize a few people, Councilman Pagan, uh, Councilwoman Rice. Um, I've heard a lot of good things about uh, Councilman uh, Katz, uh, one of my um, site managers knows you well and speaks very highly of you. Uh, and I've also worked with the county on quite a few things, especially intellectual property through the Bergen County Music Festival, the <laughs> Bergen County Film Festival, uh, Hackensack Music Festival, a ton of festivals because that's the for-profit side. The nonprofit side is all about feeding people, delivering services, and making sure that everyone gets fair and equitable treatment who lives here. Okay. Thank you. Um, Thank I, you. May I leave? I, it is extremely <laughs> cool. <laughs> Clerk, can you tell me if anybody's on Zoom, please? No man's on Zoom right now, Mayor. Okay. Name is Sandra Sibila, Sagamore Avenue. Before I begin about the Wayne puppies, I just want to tell you that you were talking about restrooms and parks. Despe desperately need a restroom in the Sagamore Avenue Park because on Sunday evening, Saturday evening in the summertime, 
there's 100, 150 children and uh, adults in that park with, I think there's one portage on in there. Also, I live on Sagamore Avenue. The amount of speeding, reckless driving on that block is, I, I'm a resident of Teaneck for 50 years. I'm in this house for 46 years. I have never seen anything but what's going on on that street of late. In addition, there's the intersection of Garrison and Sagamore. There was, I don't know how many accidents have been there, serious accidents. Just bringing that to your attention. Now on to Wayne Puppies. I'm disappointed, I was disappointed for seven long years with the decision of the council to hire uh, Vinny Ascalis, as you know, who ultimately by the state had his animal control license revolt because he slid a baby deer's throat. That was not a good decision for the Teaneck Council. How Teaneck kept him for seven years is beyond my comprehension. We paid him over $50,000 a year. He kept animals in cages stacked up like puppy mills. That's over, that made me happy. The reason why I'm here this evening is that I devoted much of my time to a specific zoning application, which is Wayne Puppies on 519 Cedar Lane for the purpose of selling puppies. No matter what they say, that's the ultimate goal. However they're going to achieve this, I hope it's never in Teaneck, never in this town. I know that franchise for over 35 years from Wayne. They are not people that you want to deal with. They are not an organization, a company that you want in this town. Uh, I was, uh, the gentleman before me stole my thunder a bit on the zoning application. I'm a little confused how we're even to this point because on this application, it clearly states, as the gentleman said, live pets, this is what they want to do, sell pets, make a lot of money. How this was approved by the assistant zoning um, officer, I don't know. Obviously, this was a mistake and not picked up by the zoning officer. Now, I don't know how the town council comes into play with something like this, but there was a lot of incompetence in here. And this, as I said, I don't know how this happened. Maybe someone can explain this to me, how we're having this discussion. This is propagating something that is bad, very bad. All of us here know the horrors of puppy mills, I'm sure. Thank you. Three minutes. Can you answer the question? We don't answer questions during Good and Welfare. After Good and Welfare, we will make our comments. Thank you. Thank you. Have anybody on Zoom? Yes, I have two hands. I'm bringing in Margaret Baker. Ms. Baker, are you ready? Hello? Yes, we can hear you loud and clear. I'm about to start your timer. Okay, Margaret Baker, I'm calling, I'm still calling about receiving some type of communication about the building that's going up or hopefully not going up on Alfred Avenue. I have been coming, I've gone to the meetings, I've been on Zoom, and I express my concerns, my questions, and I get nothing. I really think I deserve answers to my questions. Not only me, the residents are, that are really directly affected, but I think the residents of Teaneck as a whole. This project that you're proposing is one of the largest that you have had in Teaneck and very few people know about it. I'm to the point of putting out a recording in my yard to answer the questions that I'm being asked. I don't work for the town. 
the town should have made the residents available to the information about the project. My second concern or my second suggestion to you is please don't ignore me. That's the worst thing that you can do. And at this point in all of the times that I've been coming to the meeting, I've been, I'm beginning to think it's a form of discrimination. And I don't think you want that right now. I called the manager on the 12th of August, left a message. I haven't gotten a return call. I called the town clerk on the 12th of August, left a message, spoke to someone, and no return call. That's not good. I want someone to speak to me and to the other residents. And for your information, I'm to the point, and I have called the attorney general of New Jersey to let him know what's going on here in Teaneck. Everything is secret. Everything is secret. You have to write a note to be heard at a meeting. Oh, no, please. Thank you. Right. Uh, well, my name is Michael Chambers, and um, I just came here because I know the last meeting uh, they had somebody speaking on the ordinance on Van Buskirk Pro, the parking from ten to ten to I mean ten to twelve. So first of all, the guy that's speaking he can solve his own problems because he do have a driveway for his tenants. Second of all, we had a process. When I voted, everybody voted, and it took us years to get to this point. So when, when we voted for this parking thing, he was involved. He voted for it. But now all of a sudden, he don't want nobody parking his driveway. But my thing is, he keep coming back to the town. I guess he's threatening to call his lawyer, whatever he want to do. But I really don't care about that. We had a process. He voted. The majority won. The first time they, re they, they did it, they didn't get enough people, but he still came back and he did it again. They didn't get enough people, but then they took it upon themselves to send the papers home because he still wanted to not give in. So when you send the papers home and we had to send them back to the town, we still had enough votes to over, overtake them. So all I'm saying is we in Van Busker Grove, we're getting a little annoyed because he wants parking permits. He can't get parking permits if he ain't win the vote. Now, when you vote for something and you ain't get enough votes, you're supposed to stop right there. But then the town took it upon itself to stop the ordinance. You can't stop the ordinance without y'all being informed about the ordinance. So I kept calling the police and said, why you're not coming and giving these people tickets that's parking in our block, in, in our neighborhood? They said because the ordinance was stopped. You cannot stop an ordinance. An ordinance, an ordinance until it's voted out. And it haven't been voted out, so the ordinance got to stay. But we're tired of every two weeks, we got to start voting over and over again. If, if we won the vote, it's there. It's on record. We, we The papers are sent to our house. We sent them back. We had the majority. Let it stay that way. And this is why I'm here. I'm here to fight for, for our rights, not keep giving in to somebody because they're going to keep complaining. They're complaining because they don't want to do what they got to do. This is the first time in about 10 years we had to sweep a, sweep in front of our block and sweep our streets. The sweeper keep coming down the middle of our street. But now everybody from Teaneck Road, because the bus stop is right there, they can just come park their cars there all from New York, whatever, and they park their cars there. They... um. They, they, we got to sweep our own streets 
So my thing is, please, I want to keep it the way it is. So thank you very much. I do, I do, I do have a hand here, Mayor. I am bringing in Cheryl Hall. Cheryl Hall, are you ready? Cheryl? Wait, she, she's coming. I hear her car pulling up right now. All right. Why don't we... Uh... Cheryl, we're going to hold your spot yeah. in the Zoom line. If there's anyone in person there. Yes. Right here? Yes. Yes, sir. No, you raise your hand, sir. <laughs> Hi, Cheryl, just sit tight for a minute. Thank you. I just wanted to echo some of the, the uh, comments by my colleague regarding the parking on Van Busker. The reason that the ordinance- name, What's your name, sir? Oh, my name is Paul Wooten, W-O-O-T-E-N. My father purchased the, uh, the uh, home on that corner of Van Busker, Teaneck back in 1961 when I was a small kid. And, went to Teaneck High School and everything else all the way up to college and law school. Apparently the reason that so many of the residents wanted the 10 to 12 parking is because Galway across the street and the other streets now have 10 to four parking. And they have a prohibition against 10 to four so that now when people get on the bus to take the 167 or the, the 82 to New York, they bring their cars from all over and they park in that particular hub. That's a very, very, um, uh, very used hub. So we have cars that are parking there all the time. We have such a parking problem as my neighbor, as, as not my neighbor, but as my friend points out, that we can't get the street cleaner to come through. These are the same people who don't even move their cars when there's a snowstorm. So I know the residents work for years. And now that we have it in place, we now have some ability to keep the street clean and we now have the ability to be able to bring cars in and park without having the issues that we had before. The majority of residents voted on it three times in order to keep the 10 to 12. Actually, the original request was 10 to four. The council cut it back from 10 to 12. So I just wanted to emphasize how important it is for the piece of the block and the people who own the houses and are the residing there in order to keep the 10 to 12 in place. If they roll it, we do have this, this unusual hybrid because we have two buildings on the block that have apartments. And that's where the only street all the way down, whether it's from Liberty to uh, all the way down Teaneck that has this hybrid of these small apartments. So it's these small apartments building that want to remove it, even though they originally voted for it. The problem with it is the small apartments have space to park their car. They just don't want to put it in the driveway to get it done. So I just urge the council to continue the will of the residents who be there. And thank you. Thank you. Is Cheryl up? Cheryl, are you good? Uh, yeah, you, can you hear me? Okay. All right. Uh, thank you, uh, members of the esteemed members of our council um, and the public that are there tonight and um, wishing Karen a happy birthday. And uh, I, before I talk about puppies, um, I wanted to also make a plug um, to encourage the council to continue to cooperate with the will of the people for renewable energy. And I just wanna point out one fact is that, and I know I've said this before, um, the American Lung Association has still given Teaneck and the surrounding areas an F for their air quality. Many of you right up on that dais probably love someone or have a family member that has asthma. Um, 
and uh, maybe other debilitating lung diseases. The impact of the climate on, on the health of people, especially people that are poor, um, it, it's just astronomical. So we need to continue when the time is right. Obviously, the, clim uh, the political climate or the global climate is not right right now uh, with war. So I do understand that. But please, um, it is a worthy cause and those in the township need this. Um, also, I wanted, I, as some of you know, I uh, take care of people's dogs. I walk dogs and, and uh, dog sit. Um, and I can tell you, um, it's really, you know, there's some behavioral changes or differences from uh, animals out of puppy mills. Um, you know, they're more likely, and I know this is a disgusting statement, but I really want to outreach people to think about it, animals, especially dogs, puppies, they're more likely to be eating their own excrement because that's what they're going to do in a cage when they're going to in a puppy mill. Um, so then you see those behaviors at home and you have to train them and talk them out of it. Um, I know that that's a, you know, a common behavior um, with animals, but you will see that more likely than not um, because they're not kept in good conditions in cages. Um, I think it would behoove the council to investigate this particular location um, uh, or proposed location to the best of their ability and maybe give some information to the public um, because having a, a puppy store um, like this in Teaneck, it doesn't fit the, our township. Um, and what we stand for um, in in humane treatment of other people and animals. So I uh, urge you all to take some action. And if not, then maybe we need to band together to, um, you know, the, the residents and citizens to uh, demand more information because we shouldn't allow something like this to happen on our watch. Thank, Thank you. you Cheryl. Okay, Jean. Good evening, outfit of the week. Uh, thank you for taking care of uh, our parking sign on Elm Avenue. Thank you, manager, for meeting with me earlier this week, uh, this month regarding the pledge to stand up for hate, um, uh, Mr. Mayor, members of council. Uh, it has become a regular exercise for me that I come during Good and Welfare to share with you the updates about the advisory board and community relations that don't make it to the days. And then we're expected to give you a presentation on September 20th, like an annual report. And then I would like to share with you that since the uh, annual presentation we gave you earlier uh, this January, we have given you an assortment of recommendations. We have given you 13 items. 11 of the year to date, 11 of those items were given to you in January. Only one item was done. And thank you again, Mr. Roussillon, uh, for the great work we did to get the, the uh, Matthew Feldman Awards done. Now, the million dollar question here becomes, since the process seems to be broken, our updates don't make it to the dais, what is your recommendation about how to do it? Uh, is, there, is there a way to get our updates to you? Because we have updates and requests that, uh, that, that we make to you, and then we don't get them. There is no discussion about them, period. Some of them are timely right now. We have a diversity, equity, and inclusion plan that we presented back in January. And then we have a, 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 a survey we would like done. We sent a request for approval. We just want to know that the money is available so that we can continue the conversation with Fairleigh Dickinson University. That's one. Two, for the fifth time right now, I literally the fifth time, I am requesting that your permission so that we invite Commissioner Tracy Zur to our, one of our meetings so that we can learn about food insecurity. And third, another timely and time sensitive request, we would like a time slot allocated to us so that we can give you a presentation about implicit biases. Um, but all in all, I just wanna know what the best way is so that we ensure that our work makes it to the days and then ultimately the public learns about it. I think that's very important so that I can keep and maintain a positive spirit within my team. I think the last thing you want is volunteers who feel that they're not valued. And then you know what that could lead to. Um, 
but that's that. And I hope you can just answer these questions and at the same time, let us know um, and prove it that you appreciate the volunteers of this town, frankly speaking. I mean, um, but I look forward to uh, December, um, September 20th. And since I have 22nd, I would like to thank uh, Deputy Mayor Katz for how you refocused the conversation earlier on CCA. Great job. Kudos to everybody. Thank you for your, what you do for the township and have a good evening. Thank you. Anybody on Zoom? No hands right now, Mayor. Okay. Yes. Hillary Goldberg. In November, in November 2020, voters statewide overwhelmingly passed a referendum allowing the sale of recreational cannabis. Recreational cannabis is legal in all of New Jersey. TNEC is not an exception. Under the state law passed by the, le the legislator, each municipality, uh, municipality had until August 21, 2021 to take action on whether or not to allow cannabis business in their town. We opted in and chose to be one of the first towns to have cannabis businesses and to have this new revenue come in to help keep our taxes down. When TNEC opted in to allow for recreational marijuana sales, the area chosen to zone it was Alfred Avenue, located along Route 4 on the border of Englewood. The argument was that it was remote and an industrial zone and could be revitalized as a center for cannabis businesses. While an industrial zone might have been appropriate for cultivation, which needs a lot of space and generates little traffic, a retail dispensary on Alfred Avenue was a poor choice with no passerby, no appropriate locations available for rent. The council formed a cannabis subcommittee. A year later, both public and the businesses are still unclear about the parameters the council has for cannabis in Teaneck. No reports or findings have been shared, not with the public, not with the businesses, and not even with their council colleagues. We have no idea what work has been done. The actions and findings of the subcommittee have never been made public. Neither the subcommittee nor the council as a whole has ever had any public meetings that would allow residents to hear findings of the subcommittee and the details of the proposed plan. Such meetings would have allowed the public to get information and share their comments and concerns so that council could take these concerns into account. The council has had the opportunity to hold such a meeting for almost two years. With conditional licenses given by the state to set to expire before year end, the minority cannabis businesses owned by TNEC residents who have grown up here and now wanna have their businesses here will have to get their licenses renewed or extended. If they cannot find space to use on Alfred Avenue or a business district that would have had to be rezoned and quickly. Council meeting after council meeting, cannabis business owners have come forward at Good and Welfare to advocate for their business to get approval to open stores in our business districts, arguing that retail dispensaries in the business districts will improve business opportunities. There are, however, landlords who have agreed to allow dispensaries to lease their retail space. If the business districts are rezoned to allow for retail cannabis, the businesses who have spent the last year or more jumping through hoops with the state and the township to get their businesses opened will have that opportunity and bring the revenue to TNEC by TNEC residents as not out of state big cannabis business. If we do not take action to help these businesses, it may mean that these businesses will not be able to open at all or be forced to open another town. None of us win then. I support the locally owned businesses. I support the transparency this town needs to allow to open them. And I hope that action will be taken to help move TNEC into the 21st century. Thank you. Oh, I did it. Thank you. Anyone on Zoom? No hands on Zoom right now, Mayor. Okay. Yes, sir. Welcome again, Anthony Campbell, founder and CEO of Culture Craft Cannabis Collective. Thank you again to the TNAC Municipal Council, especially the Cannabis Subcommittee, who I know I bug you way too much. Also, thank you to Governor Murphy, to the CRC for our licenses, and again, happy birthday, Karen. Uh, starting to get invested in these things, so a few comments before the meat and potatoes. First, uh, no expert, just an engineer. Not all energy is the same. So uh, it's, it's interesting because it sounded like the gentleman is proposing, proposing to sell us energy and just not all energy is clean. So keep that in mind, it's a lifestyle. When California went recreational, by the way, both underage drinking and the incidence of underage DUIs and DUI fatalities decreased. Also, that I hear TNEC is getting opiate money. 
cannabis, I'm for the record, I'm requesting some of that money now. Cannabis is a great alternative to opioids and it's been proven to help with opioid addiction. No comment on a puppy thing, but treat animals well. Meat, meat and potatoes, please reconsider putting a limit on the approvals like some other cities like Hackensack who've uh, supported one cultivation license and two retail licenses. Please allow TINA candidates to get the support they need and establish themselves. Even with new zoning, it could be an issue because to be honest, just reverse redlining is real. Uh, leases, uh, discriminatory prices and leases are real. So we just gotta be aware of that. Uh, some other cities are facing some similar issues. Some a lot worse than ours. Uh, some on a smaller scale, but it's still the same. Uh, not affordable or achievable for the majority of residents due to outside forces. This is counterproductive to the concept of a micro business as defined by the CRC. I think TNEC is moving in the right direction and we're very much ahead of the curve, but we just got to keep that pace going to make sure we're all successful. Um, what is zoning? I mean, and this is why I would like to see TNEC Council host a town hall as soon as possible. I would like for the residents be more educated about where we are trying to do this and how we're trying to do it in TNAC. Um, there are TNAC residents everywhere who will be in proximity to some of these businesses and if they feel comfortable and they're happy with our establishments, let's take that into consideration. Uh, and things like 300 Route for East being out confuses me a bit. I wish there's some more communication with the zoning and building department. Alpha is literally right across the street. Uh, the, the, the developments in front of Miss Baker's, um, right there on Cedar and of 300 Roof for East, you're behind the houses there. Just, I don't know, maybe we could have more uh, discussions with zoning just because we got to make sure that we get these licenses. And in general, let us local candidates start their programs. We would like to start. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone in Zoom? No hands on Zoom there. All right. Anyone else here wishing to speak? Yes. Alan Sohn, TNEC resident. It's always important to remember that elections have consequences. For the months before the November 2021 election, six of you spent hours and hours and hundreds of dollars and put signs on your lawns and ads in newspapers decrying the two possible referendums that were put on the ballot in November 2021. One, moving elections from May to November, and the other, implementing community choice aggregation. Most of you had signs on your lawn, which were not covered by the Election Law Enforcement Commission advocating to save TNEC from some boogeyman. Uh, the voters were not convinced Overwhelmingly, by a more than two to one margin, they voted in favor of both of the initiatives, moving elections from May to November, moving and approving the community choice aggregation project. Three of you who worked tooth and nail to oppose these applications for moving elections from May to November have enjoyed the end of your third extended month of service courtesy of those residents who voted in favor of something that you vigorously opposed. It is really instructive to see the way two of you, Deputy Mayor Katz and Mr. Kaplan, dealt with Matt, Matt Smith this evening in speaking with him. Deputy Mayor Katz, to his credit, asked constructive questions. It was not something he supported. It was not something that he advocated in favor of, but he said, how can we best move ahead to implement the will of the people? Mr. Kaplan spent minutes, minutes, minutes dragging out with second guessing, Tuesday night quarterbacking, trying to come up with explanations of why Matt Smith was wrong for proposing something that could have worked and should have worked. I attended meetings of the Environmental Commission for years, going back to 2020. I saw members of the public, including Ms. Paula Rogovin, other members of the public, and the Environmental Commission as a whole, pushing for a community choice aggregation, a plan that could have been implemented years ago. And I saw Mr. Kaplan drag his feet, insist that they needed to come up with reports refusing to turn information over as a liaison to the council. 
Remember, Mr. Kaplan is not a gatekeeper, nor is any other council liaison a gatekeeper. They're just a message boy taking information from a board of commission and passing it to the council and vice versa. The efforts to delay this prevented this from being implemented at a point in time when energy was less expensive, when inflation was lower, when there was much less uncertainty in the market. This could have been implemented and should have been implemented years ago when at a point in time, residents could have saved money. This November 8th, we should remember that elections too have consequences. We should remember who respects the will of the people and who does not. Anyone on Zoom? No hands, man. Okay, then seeing none here, we will uh, close good and welfare. All right. Okay. Um, we're going to go a little bit out of order only because Deputy Mayor Katz needs to leave for business purposes. So, Deputy Mayor Katz. Thank you, Mayor. No, I just want to address the um, the puppy mill um, comments. Yeah, I thought it was. I just want to address the puppy mill comments. Yeah, I think um, we should we should app listen. There's the elephant in the room, which is the current applicant, which I don't think any of us on the council are going to uh, comment about specifically because um, I, th I think that at the end of the day, they're working within the ordinance, but they are doing whatever they're doing. And uh, the town, I'm sure, is going to be watching this very carefully if they do end up opening. Um, but I do feel that we should make sure that we, you know, as Mr. Goldstein mentioned, look at the, uh, other ordinances and, and start moving forward to make sure that we put in place protection so that we can make sure that nothing like this ever happens again in Teaneck, if that is the will of the council to not be supportive of these puppet puppy mills. So that would be my suggestion and my request. Okay. That's, no, that's, that's it. it. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Is that what she said? Then I will go over to my right, council member Rice. Sure. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I just want to start by concurring with Councilman Katz that I know that we've discussed this many times um, and would just really like to know how we can ensure that um, the ordinance, which does not permit cats and dogs, um, is indeed enforced. Um, as always, just thank you to all the residents that do come out to speak, uh, whether in person or in Zoom. Thank you, Danielle G. Uh, for the work you do on our Board of Education. I'm sure it's a busy week, so thank you for, for being out tonight. Show Hall, uh, Ms. Ofer, Mr. Goldstein, again, with regard to thank you for your comments about weaned puppies. We have discussed this many times, and I hope that we'll have some resolution that is in the best interest of all animals, particularly the dogs and cats that you mentioned. Um, so thank you to Mr. Glover for his letter that we received that was going to be posted on the next agenda and his proposal to meet uh, food insecurities. Judge Wooten, thank you, and Mr. Michael Chambers, um, residents from Van Busker for attending tonight. I hope that the township manager can share the status of that current um, ordinance with regard to the 10 to 12 parking um, cannabis committee. Hopefully we can receive an update as to what is happening so that we don't have the clock run out on our residents who have obtained their licenses, which are conditional upon them obtaining location. So um, I know that they're working together, but um, I hope that we can make some things happen before you guys lose your licensing. I just wanted to mention um, on August 21st that the Martin Luther King Birthday Committee commemorated the March on Washington on August 28th, 1903. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? No? So all this time I've been talking and you guys haven't heard what We heard you, we heard you. Okay, just not recorded. It's all good. Um, August 21st, the Martin Luther King Birthday Committee commemorated the March on Washington, which was held on August 28, 1963. It was a beautiful day, well attended by residents and county officials. They additionally honored the lifelong work of our own field Theodore Lacey and Arnold Brown, 
both the voice of the activists and now known as justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion advocates. Uh, we presented them with a uh, certificate of appreciation from the township. Thank you, council colleagues. And um, I did want to speak about the resolution that we have, um, the concerns that were mentioned at the last planning board meeting, that we have a number of lots that are noted as being in um, need of areas of redevelopment and some residents that were not. I'm just very curious as to what that's going to look like. Um, I think it seems as if a proposal that was made by one of our residents some time ago about single family houses would be an appropriate um, proposal for that area because now we're going to have high rises next to, to individual homes. So I hope that there's something that we can do to address that. I hope I can get a few minutes back since I had some mic challenges. Um, 30 seconds. So, and also I just want to mention that many times we have asked about a code enforcement officer. And perhaps if we had a code enforcement officer, the many notations that we need about these various lots, um, rodent infestation and all the cars and things, that, you know, it just seems like for years it has been able to take place. And now all of a sudden it's an area of improvement. And just because now that we have increased the option to raise to $2,000, it doesn't mean that residents would still pay those fees. Um, so I'm hoping it's something that we can address. And finally, August is National Black Business Month. I'd like to shout out Mr. Martin, who is closing his cleaners on the plaza after being in business for 35 years. Thank you. Okay. Councilman Pagan. Thank you, Mayor. Before I address some of our residents' comments, I'd like to remind residents that during the upcoming month of September, we celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month starting on September 15th. And just a couple of weeks ago, Ecuador Independence Day was also recognized. We also observe National Prisoner of War Missing in Action Recognition Day on September 16th. And just a friendly reminder to our older adults that on Tuesday, September 13th, the county will be hosting its annual Senior Picnic Festival at Van Son County Park in Paramus from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. In addition, for parents of kids returning to school, Governor Murphy has temporarily suspended the state sales tax on back to school purchases, and that suspension remains in effect until September 5th. So parents should try to take advantage of those discounts while they have the chance. And as was noted earlier by our manager, we will be observing September 11th at City Hall at 8.20 a.m. with a ceremony on that Sunday. When it comes to cannabis, I do support expanding the zone so long it is, as long as it is done safely and responsibly regarding food insecurity. Thank you, Randy, for being here with us tonight. And if it's okay with you, I will call you tomorrow to pick your brain on this some more. As for energy aggregation, everyone agrees that we cannot in good conscience support any initiative that will increase utility rates for senior citizens living on fixed incomes or for working families who are struggling to put food on the table and keep the lights on in their homes for their children. But we are going to keep working on this with our consultants with Food and Water Watch with our residents because we want to get this done at the right time, the right way. Regarding Van Buskirk, Mr. Manager, can you please give us an update on the situation on that street when you get a chance? Also, I'd like to thank my colleagues on this council for supporting renaming a street after team basketball coach Curtis March. He was a great teacher and a great coach. And he was one of the three teachers who had the biggest impact on my life while I was growing up in Teaneck. So thank you. And I look forward to that street renaming. And lastly, as for the comments on Wayne's Puppies and Holy Name Hospital, we hear you. But unfortunately, we cannot comment extensively on pending litigation, according to our attorney. And that, Mr. Mayor, is my time. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Kaplan. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, regarding the resident that made comments uh, about not using the particular tools that are available uh, to us in the state statute uh, concerning the areas in need of redevelopment, look, I, I agree that it's horrible that some landlords are not doing things appropriately, but where we disagree is that we should, as a council, use every tool at our disposal to help our residents. And uh, that is something I am committed to, and we will fight 
using every opportunity at our disposal here. Um, I, I don't think anybody uh, is a, abandoning their property on the off chance that we may have used this. Um, a, as a member of the cannabis subcommittee, I think the fact that people say we're moving too fast on cannabis and also too slow is probably a good sign we're somewhere in the right zone. But uh, I, I think there's great merit in Mr. Campbell's and others' comments that we should have public information sessions. Part of the reason I've held off in requesting them is that the state seemed to take a hurry up and wait stance on final rules, many of which don't exist yet. But if there are four nodding heads here on council, I'd like to schedule something. Perhaps we can uh, find a date at our next meeting to pick a date and solicit subject matter experts and planners to discuss how to best move forward in this space that speaks to the unique challenges TNEC has. Uh, speaking to uh, the Van Buskirk residents, if I can uh, give you a card before you leave, I'd like to uh, chat with you about those ordinances and I look forward to the manager's report. Uh, speaking to Ms. Angel's comments uh, regarding the neighbors, I, I mean, look, we understand where you're coming from. We live here. Uh, I have friends in throwing distance of your home. My daughter goes and play dates there. We visit a lot. And there's a limit to what I can say during pending litigation. But I wanted to mention that we did ask uh, for information from the neighbors throughout this process and to date haven't received the response to some of those requests. As the mayor and council mentioned when we passed the ordinance, we're open to working with all of our residents. And uh, we look forward to a satisfactory resolution that includes all the parties. And our, guard, our guiding light is always what's best for TNEC. Um, I just wanted to mention, as uh, I said earlier, our code is now up to date. Uh, you can go and just Google TNEC code and see what's in it. There are a couple of uh, uh, new legislation that's in the left-hand column you can take note of. And if anybody has any issues, please feel free to reach out. My contact info is on the website. It's kkaplan, K-K-A-P-L-A-N at TNEC nj.gov. I'm happy to chat with you. I'm happy to uh, discuss these issues. And uh, yeah, let's keep moving to next forward together. Thank you. Council Member Pagan. Uh, Council Member Pagan. Birthday. Yes. Council member. Thank you all Oregon. very much for the birthday wishes. There's no one else I would rather spend my birthday wish <laughs> with. And just for everybody's knowledge, I'm now eligible for 55 and over housing, so we can build some of that. Um, to answer Ms. G, it was very nice um, to watch how quickly uh, the Board of Ed and Council worked together to get busing for a lot of private school students that um, through no fault of anybody's um, almost didn't have it. And a big shout out to Ms. Pinsack and also to Stacy Goldstein, uh, who um, is an administrator in one of the private schools who worked really hard with her and kudos to the Board of Ed and the leadership of the schools for taking her help and really forming a public private partnership. I hope that the schools will lean on her going forward. She's been an administrator for 20 years and she's a great resource. Um, as far as Wayne's Puppies goes, we were taken aback when Mr. Cohn and um, Elisa Frank from the Humane Society came here. We were not aware that anything had happened. And for everybody out there, the, the pictures are heartbreaking. Um, most of us are big fans of puppies and have them and love them. Um, we, we didn't know. And um, council, not this council, but previous passed a law not allowing puppies here, not allowing puppy mills or the sale of puppies. And that still stays in effect. I would love it if our zoning subcommittee could do something about the zoning issue so that even if this doesn't apply to Wayne's puppies, um, we'll make sure that this doesn't happen again. And just for everybody's knowledge, the manager is on top of this and no puppies can be sold in Teaneck. And if they house puppies here, they will be watched and they will it will be made sure that they are treated appropriately if we have to be in there every day we'll be in there every day um, but they can't be sold from here um for um a big thank you to mr glover i know we froze him out of here and he went home to get warm um but also i love the the idea of bringing tracy zor here to speak and if we could counsel list that for our next meeting Food insecurity in TNEC is not okay. And I, I know she's been a big advocate and she's always pleasant to have around. 
Um, for those of you who didn't uh, catch the line in Dean's report about the dunk tank that we're going to have at TNEC Day, that is to raise money for the food pantry and you will have the opportunity to spend money um, to dunk your council member of choice or the manager volunteered. I think we're still waiting for the attorney. And so that is a time <laughs> that Mr. Sohn can throw balls at Mr. If Kaplan doing it, doing it, guys. and raise money for a good cause instead of just throwing things out there. Um, I think that's all I have. Thank you. Go ahead. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, two, two specific comments. One that I forgot to give under my committee report, but it's very um, very connected to some of the comments. Um, at the past planning board meeting, the planning board unanimously approved the area need for the West Englewood and Teaneck Road um, areas. That said, approximately seven or eight neighbors spoke, maybe four or five. I gave them all my phone number, um, offered to set up a meeting. Uh, they didn't reach out to me to set up a meeting, but I did have the opportunity to speak to one of the neighbors in detail, I believe the Mackenzies. Uh, we went through the site. Uh, there is nothing planned for the site as of yet. It's several, it's obviously three blocks and one, almost one entire town block and it's dozens of lots. So there was nothing planned. They have my number. Um, I look forward to speaking to any other members of the area or anyone else that wants to come out and to discuss that area. Um, as it relates to Margaret Baker, I look forward to speaking to you. I beg you to call me at every meeting. So again, my phone number is 917-902-9303, 917-902-9303. Please write that down. Um, and um, I'm not sure, I guess, Mr. Manager, Mr. Clerk, if she did please call you, if you could please call her back. I know you've called her back in the past, um, but I have not yet heard from her. I am fully aware of... Um, I'm fully aware of the projects that are going down on that site. Um, the one comment she had made that very few people know about it, just to clarify, is because it's very there's only three TNIC residents in that entire area. So it's, it's going to be a great project. And if anyone wants to talk to me about that, I visited Ms. Baker as did everyone on this council. And of course, we look forward to going back there. Uh, on behalf of the subzoning committee, um, uh, the um, self-appointed chair left, but I, um, the cannabis committee had given their comments to our planner, um, to our planner can use to draft um, some additional zoning areas and zoning ordinances that's being worked on. And they've had some quite a bit going back and forth with that. So I think we are finally um, making progress with the sub zoning committees and the cannabis committee. So we can get an order another additional zoning ordinances on the books ASAP. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, uh, great. Mr. Mayor. Uh, yeah. I just wanted to mention, uh, Ms. Zabillo mentioned Garrison Avenue traffic. I forwarded to you and Ms. Zabillo a Garrison Avenue traffic study that was done so that uh, yeah. she could benefit from the information. Yeah. Um, I was actually going to mention that. Sorry. And uh, since I'm in the neighborhood and I knew the study was done, and I was, I was going to ask Dean, I don't know if we did we come to a conclusion on what we, we were or were not going to do relative to that? Uh, we, we made some significant improvements along Garrison Avenue with the traffic calming striping, uh, some additional larger stop signs. We'll certainly take a look at Sagamore and Garrison specifically again, but I believe something was done by that intersection. But I happen to know, so I'll certainly uh, notify the police department about the uh, complaint of speeding. Yeah, I think we I think we we looked at Sagamore right at the park in that stretch of the park, because mm -hmm. I know PPREB had brought it up. And we're talking about some type yes, of yes, and that Sagamore Bell area, yeah, and uh, where it's a little bit better. Sagamore and Bell, the yeah, to, to yeah, yeah. We, we made the stop sign changes there. It's been successful. Right. The yeah. the Artvatsky intersection, the there's yeah. in the lines yeah. on the road. We did, did have one accident this past uh, two weeks ago. There was an accident. Mm -hmm. The uh, driver failed to yield. And he just yeah. shot right out right of the intersection. Through. That was human error, as almost every accident there is, but the level of accidents have plummeted there from an ambulatory yes, point of view compared to where we are significantly. Okay. All right. The only other comments I have um, in terms of the Van Buskirk and the permits, uh, I briefly spoke with the deputy mayor. We're, we're going to take a look at the, the permit fees with you and see if there's something we can do here to try and ameliorate the, the non resident parking a little bit more. Um, we, we, I think we have some data. Uh, I'll, I'll dig through my files uh, with respect to where we stand as a town with our permit fees versus other, other towns' permit fees and see whether or not we can come up with something that might, uh, might work better for that area and 
everywhere. We, we did the, we did the sir. I was my office was contacted about parking on Van Buskirk, and I, I really didn't have information on previous history from years back. But there was a request to change the parking restrictions, uh, so a petition was submitted to us, uh, and you know, we follow our protocol. Once we receive that, we examine it. Uh, we send out a letter to the residents in the affected area about the change, and they have an opportunity to send their response back to us. But it's dead in the water. There's not going to be any change. The majority of residents voted not to change anything on that street. Okay. So as far as I'm concerned, it's a okay. it, it, uh, new point. So the system works. The system works. Okay. Um, and, and just may the, one last <laughs> thing, it just with regards to uh, the pet store, pet stores are permitted as a retail use under our zoning ordinance, but uh, the township adopted an ordinance that specifically prohibits uh, the retail sale of dogs and cats uh, and the issuance of a certificate of occupancy in this case is limited to compliance with the uniform construction code uh, and zoning ordinance and does not authorize the establishment to sell dogs and cats so they're housed there if they do open it's been closed you know we'll strictly monitor it and take the appropriate enforcement action and and i would say to the public you know, there's only so many police officers and so many council members and so many other people. If you see something that you feel we need to take a look at, by all means, let us know. And we will certainly take a look at it. I mean, all of us here, I know on a, on a daily basis, send things to the manager uh, for follow-up and it pretty much all gets done. So uh, please, please, please send those things to us and we'll, and we'll, we got to monitor. We got to overlook it. Okay. And, and may, I'm sorry. Sure, last go thing. Ahead. I, I spoke to Mark Malice. He's the developer uh, for Alfred Avenue uh, today, and I will be meeting with him along with Miss Baker and the two other Alfred Avenue residents. So I'll be setting that up uh, within the next few days. Okay, great. And then finally, in response to the chair from uh, the advisory board on community relations, is as he knows, and I think other members of his uh, group knows, I have personally met with them on several occasions, both personally and via Zoom to talk about the issues that they have discussed. And I've given them numerous suggestions as to how to proceed on a number of them. I know some of them have already, uh, from the January thing, have started to find their way to the newsletter, as I mentioned, uh, and other things are being done. Uh, I will only say though that your report will be in, as I mentioned to you today and yesterday, that the report will be on uh, the agenda for the September 20th meeting, at which time I would ask you to be here so that you can field questions from council with respect to uh, everything that you have in that report. Okay? Mr. Chair, can we yes. make a motion to extend the Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> Everybody wants that one. I don't know why. <laughs> no, nobody wants to do it. Nobody wants to do it. Okay. All right, moving on to the consent agenda. Uh, Doug, please read the uh, bill list. I'm out. Mayor, this evening on our bill list, we are considering... Give me one minute. We are considering on our consent agenda this evening, Mayor, resolutions 235 to 241-2022, and the bonus in the amount of $2,596,355.58. Thank you. Uh, Schwartz. There we go. Any yeah, discussion? Right. Okay, call the roll. Yes. No on resolution 237. Yes on everything else, including the bills list. As I found there were no Board of Education complex. Councilman Begun. Yes. Councilman Yes. Councilman Yes. Council yes. Council yes. Debbie Mayor Schwartz. Yes or all. Debbie Katz. Madam Levy. Yes. Introduction of ordinances. Uh, Doug, if you can read in the ordinances into the record. 
Absolutely, so we have ordinance number 41-2022 amending section 36-1 of article 1 and section 36-12 division 2 article 2 of chapter 36 of traffic of the township code of Tina respecting the designation of Irene Court as a one-way street and prohibited parking. We have ordinance number 42-2022 amending and supplementing section 33-23 of article 5 zoning of chapter 33 development regulations of the township code respecting solar panel installations. We have ordinance number 3-2 amending and updating appendix three fees and charges for township services of chapter two township parental charter administrative code as amended by ordinance 1-2018 respecting the fees for statistics documents in the township ordinance number sorry ordinance number 44-2022 amending section 36-11.12 of Division 1 of Article 2 of Chapter 36 in town traffic of the Township Code and restricted on street parking spaces for the handicapped at 119 Shepherd Avenue. Last but not least, we have Ordinance Number 45-2022, amending Sections 27-2 and 27-4 of Chapter 27 of the Township Code of TDAC, respecting recreational activities and parks and facilities and permits. Can I have a motion to move? Second. Discussion? No. Motion to ignore. Second. I thought it was a call. 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 Roll 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 call. Yes. Councilman Kaplan. Yes, on all except 42, where I'll abstain. 42 abstention. Uh, Deputy Mayor Schwartz. Yes, on all. Mayor DeLevy. Yes, on all. Hearing nothing further, as long as Deputy Mayor Schwartz is okay with it. Okay. All right. I have a motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. Oh, 11 p.m. See everybody at T next.